Engagement and uh, empowerment are two very powerful words. However, in order to make them effective, senior managers have got the responsibility, first of all, to ensure that employees are fully engaged and that there is a culture of um, inclusivity where people can contribute and participate with their creative ideas and uh, their skills and competencies. Only then can we talk about empowerment, which is the process by which there is clear delegation of authority and responsibility and where opportunities for people to work together in different team formats to pursue the organization's goals and objectives and to tackle inherent problems and to help with the creation of value added for the end customer. So the two words empowerment and engagement go hand in hand and the, the synergy levels and the energy deployed will create the desired impact and will enable an organization to create its competitive advantage. Welcome to session number five of the Excellence 004 program. Uh, today we're going to discuss the issue of empowerment and how it uh, affects organizations as they try to compete in uh, this modern age of um, a digitally based economy. Uh, first of all, right at the onset, what do we understand by empowerment to be, it is purely and simply a process for engaging people and allowing them to perform to their optimal level. Senior managers are expected to enable individuals to uh, be empowered and to prepare them for being empowered. Uh, it's also about authorizing uh, people to make decisions without having to uh, seek uh, individuals, uh, senior managers' permissions. And it's also about encouraging uh, individuals to be included in the process of adding value to the end customer. The whole process of empowerment is a senior management responsibility and one way of uh, checking the effectiveness of leadership is uh, looking at how they attempt to build empowerment within their organizations. The process of empowerment uh, can be looked at uh, from this model uh, which has three distinctive levels. Uh, one level is the degree of emphasis that leadership places on growing empowerment within the organization and the other level is the expected organizational benefits that can be achieved. At the start, senior managers have to create a climate of encouragement where employees feel comfortable uh, to volunteer and uh, be proactive and actively involved in the process of continuous improvement. And that can be done by fostering a climate where suggestions for ideas are welcomed, um, where employees uh, can feel free uh, to critique and uh, recommend solutions and where they can forward uh, ideas to uh, senior managers. The next stage of empowerment is more structured and that relies on senior managers to uh, involve people formally to take responsibility for improvement activities and this is normally done in the context of uh, various team structures and work uh, that affects uh, individual units, uh, divisions, departments or the organization as a whole. And the third level of empowerment is to enable employees to make much bigger decisions without having to refer to somebody at the higher level. And those decisions are made with confidence by doing the right things rather than just doing things right. Organizations, of course, using this model will derive uh, more benefits uh, if the leadership uh, is effective in creating those three levels. If we want to go at the best practice example of empowerment, uh, there isn't better than 
uh, 3M, for instance, who have empowerment at the heart of their values and guiding principles. Um, recently, 3M has been celebrating a century of innovation, and uh, they basically uh, have referred to empowerment as a management process, as something that is the lifeblood of their organization. The key elements of uh, this management process that exists within 3M includes a vision which is defined in terms of innovation and empowerment, uh, having some uh, critical factors of success and stretch goals which are innovation driven, uh, engaging everybody towards a customer uh, focused approach, uh, and driving with empowerment. The empowerment becomes the engine for rendering value to the customer and having a two-way communication at all levels and um, encouraging people to network and build synergy levels and recognizing employees and teams for the value that they create for 3M. The word empowerment is not strange to 3M uh, because it um, was there at the inception of the organization uh, with uh, their first uh, chairman and CEO, William McKnight, who had the following principles, giving people freedom to do their jobs, uh, taking risks and uh, allowing mistakes to be made and creating an environment for learning and growth for employees. These principles have guided 3M over a hundred years and allowing it to create a sustainable competitive advantage. There are nine rules uh, for effective empowered teams. First of all is to allow people uh, to do the job and do it right, creating a work environment basically that is not just driven uh, by quarters and by uh, cost uh, control, uh, but allowing people to interrogate, to use an inquiry mind and to drive inefficiencies, not at the detriment of the customer, but whilst delivering high value to the customer. Step number two is looking at employees as the enabler and not as a cost. It means engaging them through their skills and competencies, but also allowing them to work together and build the synergy levels that will allow uh, the teams basically to deliver the short-term, medium-term and long-term benefits uh, of the organization. And the third one is uh, having a leadership style that is infectious and that really creates the right attitude because the positive behavior, positive attitude induces uh, positive outcomes and creates basically the mindset that uh, everybody desires and would like to see happen. And uh, number four is sharing knowledge uh, and this will inspire motivation because people feel valuable and valued and by the same time they will appreciate the contribution of others and ideas that are shared and transferred uh, give the bank of knowledge and expertise that everybody can dip into and everybody can benefit from whilst they are rendering value to the customer. Number five is coaching and not controlling, which means that uh, people have to assume the responsibility uh, by being mentored and guided and uh, engaging with uh, a high motivational perspective and not being controlled and stifled and uh, having to seek uh, advice and permission at various stages of assuming their responsibilities. And number six is delegating responsibility to the teams because the empowerment of teams is really uh, at the heart of um, creating the total value added. Projects are managed through teams, teams make the decisions. If teams share the same goal and therefore uh, we are engaging uh, the total capability for adding value to the customer. And putting an infrastructure and the right resources that will allow individuals and teams to work with full empowerment and to make good use of it. Uh, and this means that uh, resources uh, such as tools, uh, information, financial resources, uh, they're all critically important for allowing people to add value and to deliver to the customer. And similarly to what we said about 3M, allowing people to make mistakes perhaps and allow people the freedom to learn 
and learn and relearn and experiment with new ideas. And of course recognition means that we have to reward people who are empowered, who add value to the customer uh, with the right wages and the right recognition schemes so that retention of those employees becomes possible and so that the knowledge-based asset of the organization itself uh, will allow it to um, uh, achieve and maintain a competitive advantage. So all of this together, em empowerment and engagement, are two uh, critical factors that enable the creation of uh, an environment of learning and innovation. It means that an organization is not going to dry out from opportunities to learn and experiment with new ideas. It means that we have created a climate and an infrastructure that continuously f uh, fuels and supports um, uh, continuous learning. It means that we have created a seamless uh, approach and the, an interdependent approach for delivering to the customer. It means that communication flows from the right place to the right person at the right time in the right format and all the time. It also means that uh, information uh, is um, uh, ecosystems driven. It, it means that we uh, use uh, information in a combined way. It means that we revalue the information that we have and it means that we are uh, able all the time to deliver uh, consistently and continuously to the customer. And the accountability uh, on the performance of teams, for example, is uh, through a volunteered uh, bottom-up approach uh, because the feedback is uh, to allow people to uh, know where they need to improve, but also it could be taken at the highest level within the organization through 360-degree upward feedback, for example, uh, and that will create uh, this open organization, an organization which is encouraging networks and synergies. How to establish uh, a culture of learning and innovation, again, is about uh, permeation and uh, transfer and seamlessness. It's about flexibility and moldability of the systems that we have in place. It's about engagement rather than control, so flat organizational boundaries. And it's about inclusivity rather than exclusivity and allow people to come in at all levels and all the time. And it's about putting the values at the heart of creating the environment of learning and innovation by reinforcing the values, the cultural norms and the guiding principles. One final note on this is um, really a quote from Henry Ford who said, I could use a hundred people who don't know there is such a word as impossible. And indeed, um, teams are the heroes of modern times and uh, teams uh, can afford to tackle impossible tasks. Thank you very much. Teams are the heroes of modern times. However, the imperative for uh, organizations is to create a real culture of teamwork. Now, this does not mean uh, having quarters of numbers of projects sponsored, number of individuals who are participating in a team uh, format, and the number of teams working on projects at any point in time. The true test for senior managers is to uh, reinvent the organization by giving it uh, an ethos where teamwork is the only method of working. Uh, and that means that right at the onset, at the vision and mission levels, uh, recognition to teamwork has to be clearly emphasized. And this will have then uh, to be translated in terms of the processes and the procedures which the organization can put in place to allow the inclusivity of individuals in a team context but also uh, to allow work to be deployed uh, through synergy and through a team-based approach. Furthermore, uh, an organization that is serious about creating uh, a team-based culture will have an integrated performance management system which um, evaluates the performance of individuals 
uh, on the one hand, but also it will evaluate the performance of individuals in the context of a team-based approach. And the other aspect that an organization needs to pay attention to, if it is serious about a culture of teamwork, is to allow bottom-up, top-down uh, approaches of communication and giving feedback. Uh, for instance, having a 360-degree upward feedback process is a clear demonstration that senior managers are serious about creating teamwork and they are willing to receive uh, feedback, upward feedback from uh, subordinates and employees. And uh, the last thing which is important in the context of a, a team-based approach is really having a structure that rewards and recognizes uh, teamwork. Indeed, uh, the extraordinary performance achieved through synergy and uh, teamwork uh, is uh, something that needs to be focused on and needs to be measured in the right way. And whilst we always emphasize the importance of recognizing individuals through um, the right reward schemes and the, the, the right incremental uh, additional benefits that we can give them through their own individual performance, it is also important to uh, be able to evaluate the tangible and intangible contributions that individuals uh, within a team context uh, can create on behalf of their organization. Uh, good morning and uh, welcome to session six of the Excellence 004 series. Today's session is going to talk about uh, teamwork and uh, teams are the heroes of modern times and knowledge-based work environments are highly dependent on teamwork so it's going to be worthwhile for us to explore a little bit this theme and understand various aspects of teamwork. Uh, teams are about togetherness and they're about synergy and they're about uh, one plus one equal four and uh, they are about achievements and they're about celebration together. Uh, maybe we could kick off with uh, some interesting quotes uh, which will convey the message about the importance of teamwork. Uh, first of all, teamwork is the ability to work together towards a common vision. So teams uh, create alignment. Alignment is what many organizations wrestle with and find difficult to create. Uh, teams are about the ability to direct the individual accomplishments towards organizational objectives and this is another method uh, for creating alignment and that is to make sure that every individual effort counts and can be hooked in uh, towards organizational objectives. Teamwork is about the fuel that allows common people to attain uh, and common results. The uncommon results are about extraordinary performance and common people are people who have similar abilities and uh, the same level of uh, competency and creativity levels. One plus one equals four, I said. Teamwork is about the, great, the whole being greater than the sum of the individual parts. Um, and teamwork, simply stated, is less me and more of we and creating a culture which values others, uh, which encourages interdependency and therefore eliminates egos and puts the individual in the right perspective and encourages a climate where working together becomes the norm. Because a job which is worth doing is a job worth doing together. Some other explanations of teamwork mean that we have to bring people together uh, we have to encourage the flow and the transfer of ideas and information. Uh, we have to create a climate that links the um, individual efforts together and getting one common goal, i.e. for people to succeed together. It's about dividing the common tasks but doubling the success and the impact. So com coming together is a beginning uh, keeping together is progress and working together is success, as Henry Ford has said. 
Stephen Covey uh, talks about synergy and he says that synergy is the highest activity of life uh, because it creates new untapped alternatives, the art of the possible. It values and exploits the mental, emotional and psychological differences between people. And I think that this is vital, particularly that uh, many organizations are wrestling with uh, the challenge of tapping into tacit knowledge. Um, and tacit knowledge is only accessible if people are willing to engage and if people are willing basically uh, to put into practice what they know and what others don't know that they have. Uh, Dr. Belbin says that do you want a collection of brilliant minds or a brilliant collection of minds and again uh, it is about uh, valuing the contributions of individuals but producing if you like a diverse range of skills and competencies which put together uh, give uh, the total human asset that an organization can create a competitive advantage with. Effective teamwork will not take place uh, of not knowing to how to do the job and how to manage work because poor teamwork can prevent effective final performance and it can also prevent team members from gaining satisfaction in being a member of a team and the organization. The behavioral mindset of the individual affects the behavioral mindset of the team. So pulling the various efforts in the right direction Creating positive energy is an absolute vital uh, task that needs to be paid attention to if teams are going to succeed with their endeavors. Teamwork is about creating a self-reinforcing upward spiral, uh, performance stimulating pride, stimulating performance, because it is the psychology, the behavior, the attitudes, the right mindset the engagement of the individual efforts, the respect for people, and the knowledge and the competencies that can all be put together, channeled towards one direction, and therefore creating the pride factor within the individual, stimulating that pride towards stimulating the performance, which is the common task at hand. Dr. McGregor says that most teams aren't teams at all, but merely collection of individuals relationships with a boss. Each individual uh, values the relationship with others for power, prestige, and position. So I think um, them and us cultures ultimately stifle the energy of the individual and create um, a sub-optimized process that doesn't drive the team uh, towards accomplishing the task. Benjamin Franklin said, we must indeed all hang together, or most assuredly, we shall all hang separately. And I think that says it all about modern times where knowledge-based work requires organizations to work only through teams. The task for an organization, therefore, is to create, first of all, the right climate and the right infrastructure that allows uh, teams to be created, to perform at the highest level, and to uh, permeate the team structures and the team-based approach throughout the organization. This model here talks about four phases, forming, storming, norming, and performing. Uh, number one stage is uh, what we call the orientation stage. It's really getting people to start to see other people's perspective. It's uh, being polite, uh, valuing interpersonal um, skills, communication skills and sharing skills, and um, just being made aware, so to speak. The second stage is the storming stage, which is trying basically to uh, respect the different perspectives and trying to learn how to manage conflict. Um, and trying to manage aggressive behavior and uh, trying to get rid of uh, negative attitudes and no negative uh, feelings, uh, particularly feelings of hopelessness where people don't see themselves fitting in a work environment. Negative energy is a big obstacle uh, for teamwork and at the storming stage it's the up to senior managers 
basically to try to drive it out. The third phase is the norming stage, and that is where the organization starts to develop the teamwork spirit by giving feedback and by engaging people to encourage them to switch to a new form of behavior and uh, trying to create um, empathy rather than confrontation of points of views. And the fourth stage is uh, the most important stage. It is the performing stage, which means that uh, organizations have to create the right environment. Uh, they have to engage the creativity of people. They have to have teams uh, which are efficient, flexible, trustful, respectful to each other, productive, um, openly sharing information and knowledge, highly communicative, helpful, and uh, flowing the value added. And of course, uh, uh, phase number five is evaluating the performance of teams. So the key questions that can be asked uh, about teamwork is first of all, uh, uh, what are we doing together? Understanding the content of the brief and understanding the, 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 the task at hand. And the second question is, how are we doing this together? Having a process which clearly defines the structure of teamwork, the format of teams, the membership of the teams, the communication of the team, and the way they meet and the way they manage the project, etc., is probably a very critical task. The third question is, uh, what kind of effects has uh, our doing on the project? And that is the delivery, the deliverables, uh, the, the, the key performance indicators, and those kind of things. And maybe a fourth question that can be asked is uh, whether the decision um, reflects that there is high empowerment. Do we want these kind of effects? Uh, it is entirely in the hands of the team to choose the direction of a particular project and to create a particular mindset for that project. And that is the phase of creating a decision. Some rules of engagement of teamwork mean that uh, number one, we have to have transparency in communication. Information and knowledge has to be shared equally. Trust has to be there at the heart of teamwork. The mutuality of uh, support is number two rule. Um, and respectful um, uh, social intercourse as equal partners means that we have to have respect for people. Everybody is valued and everybody is valuable. Creating camaraderie and uh, team spirit, number four, is uh, another important dimension to look into. And number five is understanding and sharing the responsibility as a common responsibility. Number six is doing things in a similar way. Common problem solving means the tools and the methods applied are systematic, they are consistent, they are objective, and, um, uh, you know, this will reinforce the importance of sharing the same goal. And number seven is having common goals, knowing what the brief is, knowing what the deliverables are, knowing what the desired result should be. And working with clear structures, discipline, team leaders, meetings, time management, cost sensitivity, and so on and so forth. Teamwork is at the heart of total quality management and the work of teams um, through basically engaging the human and psychological skills of listening, uh, inquiry mind, uh, creativity and interrogation, um, presenting arguments coherently and constructively, uh, having roles which are clarified, um, leading towards uh, ach achievement, um, inclusivity, recognition, all of these basically uh, assist tremendously in driving total quality management because through the work of teamwork, organizations can benefit from having effective decision making because the decisions based on consensus, on scientific approach, uh, on analysis, on evaluation, on facts, and so on and so forth. Having optimized processes, because teamwork essentially is about problem solving. 
It's about optimization, and it's about creating uh, extra value added for the customer. Teamwork enables individuals to realize and appreciate more and more who the customer is, what the customer's requirements are, and what is it that needs to be done to create customer satisfaction. And teamwork gives the organization the capacity for solving problems and uh, the skills and competencies that can be exhibited through the various projects can transcend throughout the organization and create a knowledge-based approach to problem solving. And of course, teamwork approach gives teamwork culture uh, because the work which positively impacts on the customer uh, can uh, be transferred elsewhere and elsewhere and that's how the culture of teamwork can be shaped. So there are lots of benefits of teamwork um, and the most important thing perhaps is creating alignment, what we call the us thinking. We think in the same way and we want to work in the same direction. The second benefit perhaps is giving the organization more flexibility and responsiveness. This means that um, projects uh, can serve the purpose of the business and serve the direction of the strategy and they can deal with uh, imperative uh, business objectives and uh, critical issues that the organization is facing in the marketplace or from the customer point of view. Responsiveness is developing an ability basically to respond with speed, with quality, with effectiveness by deploying the blend and mixture of skills and competencies that will be uh, available in abundance. Another benefit, of course, is engagement and inclusivity means that organization is optimal in the use of its skills and uh, competencies. And teamwork is about having fun. It's about camaraderie, it's about friendships, um, and it's about appreciation. Teamwork is about giving the individual an opportunity to be involved, to participate, to be valued. Teamwork is about empowerment, is about responsibility, making big decisions on behalf of the organization. So these are more or less the psychological and the intangible benefits which uh, are emphasized in most cases. Just some ground rules to pay attention to about teamwork. Uh, some of it we have already covered. Um, everybody is responsible for himself means that the professionalism of employees and individuals as process owners are stakeholders in the project who have valuable information, valuable expertise has to be emphasized. Subjectively, everybody is right to 100%. It means respect for people. Ideas are not criticized. Giving people the chance to argue the case. Dealing with conflict in a constructive way and allowing people basically to argue, uh, to legitimize their ideas, to put forward a case. And doing all of this with a spirit of respect for different partners. It also means that work does not create distance between people. It means that work brings people together. So conflicts have got to be resolved during the meetings um, with arguing the case and maintaining the synergy and maintaining the empathy that people have towards each other. And allowing people to make mistakes, giving people room and flexibility to innovate and create and not using reprimand and criticism and uh, negative uh, feedbacks and comments. So to finish off uh, this session, uh, there are four critical elements of teamwork that uh, we need to pay attention to. Number one is understanding what the goal is and understanding what the tasks for Allah creating the responsibility are. It means that the brief has got to be very clear, the realistic picture of what needs to be achieved. It also means that uh, discussing the culture of the organization, the current experience and the current 
uh, information availability so that the team has got a clear brief and a clear understanding about what needs to be done. The second thing is about how the team is going to do the work, which is something related to methods of working. What are the procedures? What are the processes that need to be used? Are there any available tools and techniques that the team could rely on in the pursuit of solving the problem or uh, managing the project? And what is the route for uh, uh, following the process? What are the terms and conditions for reporting, for getting top management engagement uh, for the authority level, the degree of empowerment, so to speak? The third one is the interpersonal skills, making sure that we mesh together a blend of skills and expertise levels which are essential to enable the team to fulfill its task, but also making sure that people can communicate with each other. The flow of ideas, of information is incessant and has to be on continuous basis. And the fourth um, condition or element of success is basic conditions. It means that for the teams to fulfill their jobs and objectives, they have to have uh, the supportive tasks they can draw on the pull of knowledge and expertise within the organization to allow it to continuously ensure the smooth running of the project. It means, for example, that um, they have access to uh, a planner or the planning uh, division. Uh, it means that uh, you know, they have uh, on the team somebody who is in charge of timekeeping. It means that they have uh, support for uh, project documentation and the preparation of reports. It means having some of the very, very basic um, infrastructural support in terms of IT um, and in terms of um, guidance from the wider aspects of the organization. The support infrastructure is at the heart of uh, what the team can do. So in total, this session uh, talked about the importance of teamwork in modern times, a process on how to go about creating a culture of teamwork uh, was um, explained in the session. We also talked about the key elements uh, that are important in the functioning of various teams and we finished the session by emphasizing on four pillars which are the critical factors of instigating um, a sustainable culture of teamwork. Thank you.